Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to Fisting Jawa Save the Universe. I am Fist25, and today we're going to do a first look at the brand new Citizen Con revealed and much leaked ship, the Drake Cutter Scout. It is a cousin of the regular Drake Cutter, which came out a little while ago, and uh, we have a video on that. And it's really designed as, as even more kind of bare bones to the cutter, but it's it's made for reconnaissance and scanning and gameplay that's not really in the game right now. But it is a Drake and I like Drake design and it's not too bad of a ship. Some of the rest of the B team has said they like the way it flies better than the reg regular Drake cutter. And we're going to go and test that out today here at Everest Harbor and around the Loreville system. With that, let's check out the Moby Glass and look at the specs of the Drake Cutter Scout. Right, bringing up the Drake Cutter Scout. Now, this one happens to be uh, having the Nightfall paint. This is not the standard paint. I am a concierge member, and so my Cutter Scout came with this paint. Um, my home system right now is Orison, so I don't have access to change the paints right now. But besides that, let's take a look at what it has. For some reason, it has spots for three power plants and two quantum drives and two shield, three shield generators. But what it actually comes with is a size one. I'm sorry, a size two grade D, the worst grade military Boreal cooler, which as of right now, who cares? Coolers don't really matter. It comes with an Exogen size two, again, military grade D power plant. The quantum drive, I'm not real impressed with. It is a size one. A competition grade two, grade B, a Foxfire drive. Not the worst drive ever, but again, not the best drive. And I'm also not impressed with the shield generator, which is a grade B civilian. It could, it could have been worse, uh, but it is one size one shield for this very small single player ship. Notice on the top here, it does have a scanning dish and we're going to check that out, but I don't think that we're really going to get any type of scanning gameplay and that kind of stuff until that gameplay makes it in which hopefully with citizen con telling us it'll be soon we'll we'll see uh, as you can tell this is the nightfall livery that is on here the weapons that come with the cutter scout it comes with two i actually upgraded the weapons already so my bad on that but it does come with two size one gimbaled uh, they are a size two hard point but they come with uh 117 Bulldog laser repeaters. I already went and upgraded it to attrition twos. And these are the stock missiles. It comes with a size two missile rack. Uh, featuring one size two missile. <laughs> you could change that to two size ones if you get the right rack. So it does have a total of two size two missiles and two size two guns on it right now. So with that, um, I think it's time to put on the helmet and go check out the Drake Cutter. So here we are, folks. We're in the Hangar 4 here at Everest Harbor. And the Drake Cutter Scout uh, is here with us. Uh, notice it looks very familiar like the Cutter, although it does have some different engines. Um, it does have that cool spoiler up there. Let me just throw my light on here. It's awfully dark. Uh, I do really love the Drake engines. That does look really cool. Looks like that's kind of a refueling port. It's in its VTOL configurations, but one main difference, which we'll see in the external view when we get in the ship, notice the Scout has two engines right here, uh, where the regular cutter just had one bigger engine right there. Uh, that being said, this ship does have VTOL capability, like a lot of Drake ships, which is very good. Um, Externally, I don't see a lot to actually interact with on the outside of the ship. 
So as far as like external storage, gold standard stuff, I'm just not sure. I haven't played too much with it. I've only flown it once. Uh, notice I do have some upgraded weapons on here, those size twos. I don't see any interaction points. It does kind of have that cool uh, magic school bus look as the regular uh, Drake Cutter did as well. It's got that uh, op kind of opaque handprint glass on there. Um, there is a ship inventory and it is inside, which we will see in a sec. It is a symmetrical ship, no asymmetry on this guy. And yeah, so I can't find anything to interact with on the back. There are two buttons for the ramps and that off. And so we'll go ahead and open the ramp. Notice it doesn't have a coming down uh, light like the spirit does. So that's interesting. Um, I'm now in the cutter. We're going to go ahead and close this door and we're going to turn our lights on. So now we're in the very small cargo area of the cutter scout. I, it doesn't have a lot of storage. It really only has two SCU of storage, so you can't fit a lot in here. Um, but it, that's not what it was made for. It was made for reconnaissance. Um, so it looks like here, it just says unlocked. I'm not sure what that's for. It looks like it's going to be. Oh, well, I mean, they already have battery up here. They have shield up here. So it does look like we do have access to our components here. I believe in the demo, they did show that you can put some other stuff in here and that it would cover up the components, uh, which is an interesting trade off there. There's your jump drive down there. So these things do interact with the soon to come engineering gameplay. Uh, use of this engineering system right here. You can go onto the panel, but it doesn't do anything because we don't have any engineering gameplay right now. What else is around here? We have the uh, a relay. So you, you definitely know engineering gameplay is coming and whatever would actually go up there. Uh, I guess another relay and a, and a gravity generator. Um, so that is stuff that is still yet to come. Aesthetically, it's very Drake, very utilitarian, lots of exposed pipe and things like that. I do like that look. I think it looks cool. Coming into the main cabin. We have a cozy little bed right here. Sit, lie down. Does this button work? Uh, looks like it's a light. Not sure what that actually did. Oh, okay. We have a reading light. We have a little night light in here. This guy right here does do the ship inventory. So if we click that, we can move stuff from like our local inventory into our vehicle inventory and vice versa. So that is the internal uh, ship storage weapons, things like that can go in there. I'm not seeing any buttons for this particular thing, whatever that is. Uh, so it's some kind of electrical panel, I'm sure. Over here, it's the side of the ship and what appears to be some kind of a hygiene area. It's like probably a toilet. There definitely is our toilet. And our shower up there, classic Drake toilet. Uh, and I believe we can actually close ourselves in the bathroom. And I don't see the three seashells here, but uh, yeah. So that is uh, that is the bathroom of the Drake canopy or the Drake Cutter Scout, excuse me. And that's about it. So let's hop into the cockpit. Here we have our life support, uh, an empty system access panel. Uh, looks like a gun rack over here. So if I, I can't bring my gun out because uh, I'm an armistice, but definitely looks like we can store uh, a gun and some stuff in there, which is good. Very Drake. Other than that, I don't see any other interactable buttons. So let's go ahead and hop into the pilot seat. Familiar coming up into the other area. Let's go ahead and well, we will turn the ship on. Ah, the Drake intro. So let's take a look around the cockpit. There's pretty decent glass here. Um, we have some up ahead glass. We don't have anything down below. So landing shouldn't be a challenge with VTOL, but you never know. Buttons around the cockpit. Let's check it out over to the left. 
Landing gear, deploy or not deploy? Uh, looks like we have a canopy armor button. Uh, okay, deploy our deploy our canopy armor. And this should have, yeah, you see there's like a kind of a, let me go to the outside and see there's like a shield on the side, just like the regular Drake cutter have. Um, not sure if that's actually going to help us in the future, but it's something the Carrick doesn't have and it's supposed to have. So that is for our, that levers for our landing gear. We're not going to mess with that right now. Of course, it's Drake, so there's no ejection seat. We have a big 2D radar. We have three multi-purpose displays up here with our ship status, our power triangle and our target, which is pretty darn good. That's a good default configuration. This guy right here spools our quantum drive. There is our power button. Engine on, engine off. Weapons on, weapons off. This button is VTOL. Open exterior, that's nice to know right there. So that is that button. Um, G safe limiter, what else we got? Disable ESP, more flight stuff, cruise control, and proximity flight assist. Yeah, this guy use staggered fire. We'll have to turn that on, see how that works. Our exit button and I think that's it. That is basically it as far as our buttons here in the cockpit. Let's go ahead and take a, let's take it out of VTOL mode. You can see the engines right there versus the Drake cutter. It's got those two engines and I have those attrition seeds. It's very green, this guy. Okay, let's turn VTOL back on and we will call for takeoff. You are here to launch. Here to launch. All right, let's go to external view. We'll go ahead and cycle up just a little bit. It does have a three landing gear configuration, which we'll go ahead and bring up right now. Nice and tidy. I always like the way Drake ships handle their gear and their, their VTOL settings are really good. So we will, now that we're out of the hangar, we will change VTOL around and we will engage the ship get it going let's go ahead and see what afterburner looks like not too shabby as we cruise past everest harbor okay let's go ahead and head back inside the ship so what is this ship good for uh well not much right now uh with only two size two weapons you can do a little dog fighting in it um, the scanning system, if I hit V, I'm in scan right now. And if I hold V, it'll give me a ping. Hold V and let it go. Yep, yeah, it'll ping. And that's, that's cool. But what does it really do? Not really anything. Over here, it looks like scanning sensors, right? So we have, we'll, we'll have some scanning gameplay at some point. I didn't see anything to actually expand the dish. So that's interesting, and the dish actually is just sitting on top. So nothing really going on with that guy. So this is a very small cargo ship, has two SEU versus three for the cutter. It has limited weapons. It does have, there's our size two missiles, so it does have two size two missiles. And it's, 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 you know what it is? It's a decent little starter ship. It's really what it comes down to. It flies pretty well. Uh, let's actually see how fast it can go in a straight line in space. We'll give it a small little test in atmosphere. It's taking its sweet time to uh, get to where it's going. Okay, passing a thousand CM. 1,000 meters a second. So 1,049 is its max speed. Let's find out what its its actual SCM speed is. Soon to be much slower anyway. <laughs> With the changes to the flight models coming. It's taking its sweet time to get down there. Let's see where the retro thrusters are. Yep, they're just exactly where the cutter is. There's four of them right up front. That does present a really cool view. Go ahead and hit our space brake. We'll use some boost to slow down. 
and our SCM speed is 159. So not not too bad. I definitely have worse ships before. So you can do a little bit of dogfighting in this. You could probably do a little bit of light cargo in this. But really, once we get our scanning gameplay, that's what this ship is for. So let's take it down to a moon of Hurston and see how it does an atmosphere flight around a little bit. And we'll maybe we'll do a dogfight or something because there's really not much else to show. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, so we are here at Magda and we are going to attempt not to crash and do some flying around. The atmosphere of a moon here. Kind of see what the cutter scout can do. Um, so far, the the you know the quantum's not the fastest. That uh, it's what you expect from a starter ship, right? Um, I'm more of a dogfighter in nature, so I would probably prefer even the Aurora or the Mustang to this as a starter ship. Maybe even a Pisces, but. It is Drake. I, I don't mind Drake that much. Seems to handle pretty well. It rolls pretty well. Definitely don't want to run into stuff. It's going at a decent clip here at Magda. I'm trying not to hit anything. We're past. We're probably going to pass 300. Uh, maybe not. Looks like our top speed here at Magda is 291 in a straight line. Let's see a nice pull here. Kind of do a 180. Soon that's all going to be flight control services, which one thing. OK, it came around pretty well. One thing that's going to be nice about the Cutter Scout is that it has VTOL. So it's going to be and the Cutter itself. They're going to be easier to land at different places versus a ship or I guess airplane when really when you're on a gravity area that you're kind of going to have to float it in decoupled or whatnot. You're going to have limited thruster availability, but with VTOL ships, you're going to have the the ability to actually use the VTOL. Let's go ahead and do a loop. Pretty slow on that. You can see we came up really pretty far. And we're eh, let me give it a little more oomph. OK, I had to put some up thrust there. I was worried that we might not have made that. With the boost on, which isn't a lot of boost, but it's not horrible. We can't exceed speeds of. Of our 300 limit, oh, it looks like our exceeding 400 limit, so it does kind of get going a little bit. Do some uh, flying around and third person here a little bit. I don't want to. And there's just only so many things we can show. And, uh, you know, I, I make long videos, folks, uh, so I don't know how long this one's actually going to be. Little uh, aileron roll there. There we go. That is the Drake Cutter Scout. Let's. Actually, get some VTOL going with some afterburner. Get out of this atmosphere. And we will head out into space. I guess we can try to find a dog finding mission because this really isn't a great cargo ship. From there, we'll we'll uh, we'll actually probably just talk about the paints and some of the components and wrap up the video. So stay tuned. All right, folks, so we're going to respond to a quantum beacon for a low threat uh, service beacon type mission that took a while to actually accept. Well, I, I, I chose it and then it took almost a full minute before it actually registered and gave us the combat assistance mission. So we'll see how well the uh, the cutter does the cutter scout. I got to I got to remember this is a cutter scout, not just a cutter. Remember, I did upgrade the weapons to a size two. Uh, they were size one gimbaled, which I would probably recommend for a new player. You heard my con. That's amazing. OK, I need some help moving up these bastards. All right, they're bastards. Let's get a missile on this guy. Ooh, there's a size two. 
Looks like it didn't hit. It is a Titan Renegade. We're going to increase our speed a little bit. We're probably going to end up with a Jouster. Dude is really going far away. He's turned back into me. I am protecting you. Oh. And that was it, guys. Uh, not too bad for a guy that really didn't shoot back. Easy 2,000 bucks. Uh, I don't know what else to quite say. Um, so what is the Cutter Scout really good for? Um, besides the... So let me, let me go ahead and bring up the, the DPS calculator on the screen. And we'll switch this over in real time. Oh, how about that? Hey, I'm even on the screen. So you can see that it has, let me, let me actually put the weapons I have on it. Okay, I have, I was at Hurston, so I bought some attrition twos. This is the Urkel DPS calculator, uh, by the way, for those who don't know. Um, with my attrition twos, it has 427 DPS. Uh, the missiles, 3,340 or 1,670 a piece. Now I got to go pay for one. Uh, shields, 1,650 uh, hit points. They recharge 151 a second. The power plant is more than enough. You don't need to upgrade that at 1136 out of 8750 is what it's using. The cooler is also more than enough. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. It does have quite a decent EM and IR signature, so... You're not going to be stealthy with this guy at all. Um, if I was going to upgrade the ship, I would probably go ahead and upgrade the quantum drive to start with. It it can make it. Uh, it looks like from Crusader to Hurston in six minutes, in thirty seconds, and Microtech to Arc Corp in ten minutes. But if we throw either an Atlas on there or a Voyage, which is what I recommend. We'll reduce that time uh, from Crusader the Hearst to five minutes and Microtech to Arcorp to eight minutes. A little bit better. I would probably also take off the Hex Shield. Uh, it's at 1650 for hit points. And I would throw a uh, 7SA Concord on there, uh, which gives you a little bit more hit points at 1725. Or if you really wanted to spend the money, you get the military one. The FR 66, same hit points, uh, recharges at 450. Uh, same as the Concord. Uh, so we'll go ahead and upgrade those. That's probably all I would really do uh, if I threw those items in the cart. That would cost me for the attritions, for the shield, for the quantum drive, 42,000 space bucks. With that, I also want to throw on the screen the. The kind of the Drake Cutter brochure here from from uh, CIG or Scout, I should say, uh, made to scout the universe. And uh, yeah, uh, there's not a whole lot of text here. It's, it's made for reconnaissance. Uh, like there is the dish that doesn't actually do anything right now. Uh, that's the scanning suite. Uh, what else for the Cutter Scout? There's some cool pictures here. I'll probably make one of these my thumbnail. Um, X specs. Yeah, it's 20 meters long, 13 meters wide, six meters high. Size two radar, two size two weapons, as we know, two size two missiles. This paint is the paint that I actually have, the Nightfall paint. That's what's installed. Here is the factory standard paint. No frills, all thrills, very OD green. The Cayman paint, which you can buy. And the rock slide paint, which you can also buy. A uh, so these these do come with war bond. Um, you can buy if you are concierge, you can buy this LTI token, which is probably what this thing is really good for. Uh, as the cutter scout plus nightfall paint for forty five bucks, or you can buy just the regular cutter scout if you're not, if you're not concierge for forty five bucks. It is an LTI token. It does not come with paint. You can buy both the Cutter and the Cutter Scout Twin Pack for $85. And those are both LTI. And then uh, there is some credit offers. It's five bucks more if you use store credits. 
And then there's the paints you can buy for $3 a piece, which isn't too horrible, but you can only get Nightfall if you're a concierge. That is exclusive to concierge. Then you can get all the cutters. It has the eight paint pack for all the cutters. And yeah, that's that's really about it for the cutter. Very interesting ship. Uh, let me know what you like it. If, if you like it in the comments below, what you think of the cutter. I'm going to switch back to my in-game mode. There we go. Let me know what you think of the cutter, whether it's worth your investment, uh, if you fought in it, if you like it, what you think of it. With that, I'm going to go back to Everest Harbor and I'm going to go grab my A1 Spirit and probably work on that video. So I am Fisty5. Don't forget, if you like this video, if it helps you at all, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Go ahead and join us in the Discord uh, for the B team. We are getting a lot more people lately, and it's been fantastic. Uh, fun streaming every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, or catch Java and Java with Java Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Mountain Time as they do more boring stuff. With that, I'm Fist25. We'll see you guys next time. Good night, Stan.